Yo, what's going on everybody? This is David and today we are going to be talking about game optimization. What exactly does that mean? We hear that word thrown around a lot. Optimization this, optimization that, this game's unoptimized, this engine is un unoptimized. What exactly does that mean? What goes into optimization? Now, I'm going to be describing optimization to you guys as best as I can, but obviously there's a lot more that goes into optimization, especially game optimization, than I can describe. I'm not a game developer, but I will try to kind of explain it to you guys like as simple as I possibly can, right? Like how I would want somebody else to explain it to me. Now, on the most basic level, optimization is to make certain assets or levels of the game run more efficiently on your hardware so that you can get more frames per second, right? So a good analogy that this guy kind of gives us on this Reddit post is that imagine you need to buy groceries, you make a list of what you need, then you go down every aisle looking for those items until you have traversed the entire store. Easy, right? But wait, this isn't optimal. You know some aisles don't contain any items you need from your list. So you can optimize your path by skipping the aisles that don't contain anything on your list. Optimizing a program is similar. You are looking for places where you are doing more work than you need to and find ways to skip over unnecessary work. One example is object cooling. Cooling, not sure how to pronounce that. Excuse me there. Instead of drawing everything in the game world, only draw the things in front of the player's camera. You can optimize this even further by only drawing things in front of the player's camera that are not completely occluded by another object. So for example, if you have a building that is behind another building that you're looking at, you don't really need to render that building behind the building you're looking at because you're not looking at it, right? So you can actually completely just hide that building out of the render path until it is visible again. So he says further on that there are a ton of little tricks like this that can make a program run faster or use less memory, right? He's talking about memory. A lot of the things that uh, developers are complaining about these days is the lack of memory or video memory, right? right? Let's Take the Xbox Series S, for example. It has very little memory compared to the Xbox Series X. And what most people complain about is not really exactly the lack of horsepower that the Series S has. It's actually the lack of memory that it has compared to the Series X. Because a lot of the times, optimization has to do with the video memory that it has. So this guy kind of goes more in depth about that. And he says that most games do try to use only load what you can see but that's not actually as simple in practice as this description. So he says that optimization in real life generally involves trade-off and there isn't a single perfect solution. With some simplification, a very common trade-off is memory versus processing time. You can pre-calculate a bunch of stuff and then store it in memory for instant retrieval when you need it, or you can calculate it on the fly. The first approach uses more RAM, the second approach uses more CPU, which is better? Well, in practice, it depends on how your program is running in one context, hardware, and what other things you've got going on. If you have 10 different things going on in your program and they all optimize to use more RAM and less CPU, you're going to get starved on RAM while having a bunch of CPU sitting idle. Usually a balance is best. Further on, he says that different games will have different things going on. So the best balance point will be different. Thus, they can't just default to a single universal best way to optimize that trade-off. And he continues on saying that there's another trade-off which is more subtle, optimization versus coding cost. It's usually faster, cheaper, easier to implement a dumb, non-optimized algorithm than to implement a smart, optimized one. Does that ring a bell? Upscaling, Nanite, Lumen. Spending more time testing things, fine tuning, etc., costs engineer time, which translates to money. You can think of it in terms of game makers desiring profit, and that is certainly a factor, but even if there wasn't a profit motive, it would still be a trade off. 
let's say you're a completely nonprofit entity that has a budget of X to make a game. Every dollar you're spending on optimization is a dollar you're not spending on making actual game content, models, levels, etc. right? So in practice, game makers try to spend enough resources on optimization that it's good enough for their target, right? We see a lot of that going on nowadays, the use of upscaling to make up for poor optimization. Instead of optimizing or going through each and every single level and making sure the, those assets and those shaders uh, run as efficiently as possible for the majority of the GPUs out there, they just kind of use upscaling, right? So that's why we're seeing such aggressive resolution targets these days because upscaling has gotten so good that you can just get away with using low resolution and just kind of do it that way instead of actually optimizing those levels to run really good at native resolution. Another game that comes to mind where they don't really optimize for a high resolution is the new Modern Warfare 3 beta that I just played. And it's probably the same with Modern Warfare 2. I just don't have it on my PC. So for example, I just played the beta and if I play the game at extreme quality settings with DLSS quality upscaling to 4K, I get like 150, 160 FPS, no problem. As soon as I click native 4K, all of a sudden my FPS drops to 80 to 95. That is a huge difference, right? Because most games, if I click the 4K button, if I play a native, I'll see like a 20 FPS difference, maybe 30, but not a 50 to 60 FPS difference. That just means, or that tells me that that game in particular was not really optimized for 4K. It was really optimized for 1080p and 1440p, which makes sense because most people play, especially, you know, Modern Warfare 3 at those lower resolutions. So a lot of the times you're actually getting this in video games as well. So anyways, he continues on saying, in practice, game makers try to spend enough resources on optimization that it's good enough for a target audience and neither more nor less than that. They often don't get it exactly right and or that target drifts over time. So that's why we see a lot of these games getting optimized further down the road because they don't spend the resources, right? on optimizing that game in the first place because it costs them money, They've, they have schedules, they rather just release the game with okay or good enough performance so that it runs, but it's more complete with the levels and all that than to optimize the game properly. That's why we see the games run so much better like six months down the road. For example, Gotham Knights, I just played that game on my PC when I had a 3080 Ti in my system and the game is like perfectly buttery smooth now it's running it was running at native 4k with ray tracing at like 70 or more fps with everything max settings right whereas before it wasn't doing that at all so another kind of example i want to show you guys is these two benchmarks uh, actually not city bench but superposition benchmark and 3d mark and this is kind of going to hit my points home. So for example, this benchmark has a 4K optimized setting or a custom setting. So first of all, we're going to click 4K optimized. This, from what it's telling me, is optimizing the 4K resolution and shader quality to the resolution 4K. And if we run that and open up my... Uh, FPS counter right there on my right. We're going to see this game load up. And we're going to see that now I do have my FPS capped at 117, but if I didn't have it on capped, the FPS is around 150 to 180. So just so you know. But we're just going to take a look at the graphics and everything, right? Let's see how it looks like. All right, we saw that, right? Let me exit out real quick. Now I'm going to play that same scene. I'm going to play it at native 4K. And instead of selecting shader quality to 4K optimize, I'm going to set it to extreme. And I'm going to run that same exact benchmark and we're going to see how it runs. So as we can see, 
if you're looking at the FPS counter, we're getting 30 FPS right now. And does the game look any different? No, it does not. It literally looks exactly the same. And I've run through this entire benchmark trying to look at the difference and I could not find a difference. So that's what I'm talking about. Some games will have that. They will just not be optimized even though they can still look exactly the same and run a lot better. So now I'm going to open up 3D Mark and we're going to check that game out. This is a benchmark that everybody knows about and we're going to run a 4K benchmark of Time Spy Extreme. And we're going to play one particular scene and I'm going to show you that this old ass benchmark that has been around for years now runs actually pretty awful on my PC. And the reason for that is because they are building individual assets into the game to not be optimized, but to kind of stress test your PC as much as possible. So we're just going to go ahead and run graphics uh, test number two, because it is more demanding than number one. You know, with 3D Mark, it is not an optimized benchmark. It is a benchmark that is made to push your graphics card. So even though this super old benchmark is running on my super new RTX 4080, as we can see the FPS counter, we're barely getting over 60 FPS. In fact, we're dipping down to the 55s. Now it is a little bit lower because I am recording this video, usually never dips that low. But as we can see, this this benchmark that is so old and doesn't even look that good actually runs pretty terribly. I mean, I can run Doom Eternal that looks way better than this with ray tracing. And this benchmark, by the way, does not have ray tracing. With ray tracing, right, Doom Eternal, I like over 150 FPS on average at native 4K, whereas this benchmark runs so terribly. And why? Because they just loaded it up with as many assets and transparency effects and reflections as they could, right? Just to stress test your graphics card, not to optimize it. And a lot of games will do that. They'll just load up the game with assets, load it up with reflections or different shaders and different, uh, you know, transparency objects without realizing that that's costing a lot of performance on your graphics card. All right, guys, thank you for watching and hopefully you learned something. If you do have more insight about game optimization, feel free to leave that in the comments below, especially if you're like a game dev or anything like that. Leave that in the comments below. Let me know, let everybody else know about what goes into actual game optimization. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day. Peace.